Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take estimates using Riemann sums of the area under a curve. So you would ask, why do I have to estimate when I can get the exact answer by just integrating the function and evaluating from 0 to 2 pi? Why do I have to estimate? Well, sometimes the function is not defined over the interval. You can actually integrate, but you'll be committing a grave error if you decide to evaluate. For example, if we switch sine x to tan x, well, you can integrate that and get an answer. The problem, however, is that you cannot evaluate from 0 to 2 pi because in between 0 and 2 pi, you have pi over 2, and tan is not defined at that point. And once you have an, the function being undefined within that interval, you can't just evaluate. There will be a major problem. Okay, so sometimes a function cannot be evaluated. You may have to resort to this manual estimation. Okay, and sometimes you go toward infinity. Okay, but just have an understanding that this is a good strategy for you to estimate even when you're not exactly sure of what's going to happen. And sometimes you know what the curve is but well, you don't even know how to integrate it, but you can sketch it, then you can just estimate. However, when you try to estimate, these are four of the five conditions. The fifth one, I'm just gonna talk about it because it's easy, okay? It's just like everything else. You have what you call the right endpoint, the left endpoint, the upper sum, and the lower sum. I used to confuse all of these before, okay? And because I used to think overestimation comes from the right. Okay, okay, but that's not true. And I'm gonna explain that in this video. So we're gonna solve this same problem following these four instructions. And the fifth one, I'm just gonna talk about it. So let's say we wanna get the exact answer. Well, we'll just integrate and evaluate. And let's do that so we know what value we're estimating and what we're supposed to be close to. So we see what is too far away and what is precisely close. So, the area under a curve is usually um, what happens, you integrate 2 plus 2, 2 plus sine x, rather, dx, from 0 to 2 pi. That's what we do. So, if we decide to integrate this, we're going to have this to be 2x minus cosine x. And you evaluate from 0 to 2 pi. And this is going to give us... 4 pi minus cosine 2 pi is 1, okay? And minus, if we put 0 here, we're going to get 0 minus cosine 0 is also 1. So this gives us 4 pi minus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 4 pi. So the area under this curve for one complete cycle, okay, is 4 pi, okay? I'm just going to write the 4 pi in this corner. So we expect that our answers will be close to 4 pi as we do all these estimations. So now let's go into Riemann sum. So for Riemann sum estimate, you expect it to uh, create rectangles or supposed rectangles. They're not because you, there's no way you can make a rectangle out of this. Okay. But you're going to assume they're rectangles. Okay. And choose what will be the height of the rectangle depending on the instruction that you are given. So for example, um, well, we have n equals 4, and this means that we have n sub-intervals. Break this into 4. What will be the width of each of these? Well, I can manually break this into 4 because this is 2 pi, so the middle is going to be pi. And if I break that up again, it's going to be pi over 2. If I break this up again, it's going to be some kind of fraction, which I don't know right now, but it's definitely going to be um, 3 pi over 2. Okay, that's what you have. But how do you know the gap? Let's say you can do that mental thing I just did now. Just know that your delta x is the width of each of the rectangles. So we have uh, delta x is actually b minus a over n, where this is the b, this is the a, that's the interval over which the integration is going on. And for this case, this is 2 pi minus 0, 2 pi minus 0 over the n is 4. So this is 2 pi over 4, and that means that your delta x is equal to pi over 2. 
Okay, so it means if you go from one point to the next, you'll be the gap there will be pi over two, pi over two, pi over two, pi over two, and that would be the width of the rectangle. So let me just sketch that quickly. So um, the middle of this is going to be here. That's going to be pi, and here. See, from here, the first step you take has to be delta x, so that's pi over 2. The next step, you add delta x to this, you're going to get pi. You add delta x to this again, which is pi over 2, you're going to get 3 pi over 2. So you have four supposed rectangles. This is a weird, look at this. How can this be a rectangle? Okay, but that's why it's an estimation. So now, you have a rectangle, the width of each of the rectangles is pi over 2. What is the height of each of the rectangle? Well, look at this. The height of each of these rectangles, depending on whether you take this to be the height for this rectangle, or you take this to be the height. The height is something you read off of the graph based on the function you're given. So, for example, if you pick this to be the height, it's either you read it and say, okay, this is 2, or you take 0, which is that point, the x for that point, plug it into the function. What is sine 0? It's 0. 0 plus 2 gives you 2, and that's why you have 2 here. When you get to this point, it's going to be pi over 2, and you say, okay, can I read it from the graph? Let's assume you cannot read it from the graph. Take pi over 2, plug it in the function, you get sine pi over 2, which is 1. And 1 plus 2 gives you 3, so it means when you read this from the graph, you should be getting 3. And that's how you get each of the points for any function that you're given. So now, what is the area of this rectangle? It is basically the width times the height, depending on what you choose as the height. And how do you decide that? The instruction tells you what you should do. So it will be the area of this, which is delta x times the height, which is f of x i, plus delta x times f of x i. Well, the i is changing as you're moving, so if the first one will be f of x1, the next one will be f of x2, and the next, so what, what is x1, what's x2, what's x3? This is x1, x2, x3, depending on if you're going to the right, or it will be x1, x2, x3, depending on if you're taking the left end point. Or sometimes, it's neither left nor right. You just have to look and say which one is higher and which one is lower. That's when you do upper sum and lower sum. So let's answer the questions. Firstly, I want to write the formula you're going to need for you to do this. So we know that the area, the Riemann sum, the estimate will be equal to um, the sum from when i equals 1, the very first rectangle, to the last rectangle in the subintervals that you have, in this case we have 4, so we're going to write it as 4, because that's the number of rectangles to be the last point you're going to get to, where you're multiplying the height f of xi, okay, you're multiplying that by delta x. That's what happens. Okay, and because delta x is constant, you can actually bring delta x here and then add up all of these answers you get on top, depending on what you have. So, let's answer the very first one using the right endpoint A. We have the right endpoint. So, our area, our Riemann sum estimate, R for 4, will be equal to Delta x is going to be constant, so we can write it first. Um, what's our delta x? It's pi over 2. Pi over 2 multiplied by, remember, its area. It's delta x times the height. Because we're using the right end points, we're going to be using, so for the first rectangle, this is what we use. For the second rectangle, we use the right end point too. For the third rectangle, we use the right end point. For the fourth rectangle, we use the right end point. So let's write that out. The first right end point is pi over 2, which would be what we get from the graph. We use pi over 2 plus f of, what's the next one? Pi plus f of, the next one will be 3 pi over 2 plus f of, the last one will be 2 pi 
okay. So now you have to understand how to evaluate all of these. So this is gonna be pi over two into, what will this be? F of pi over two is gonna be, if you put pi over two here, there's gonna be one plus two, that's three. So I'm gonna write three plus F of pi. If I put pi here, sine pi is zero, zero plus two is two plus um, three pi over two is gonna be um, sine of three pi over two is negative one. Negative one plus two is gonna be one. And then I have two pi, sine two pi is zero plus two, that's gonna be two. Okay, so at the end of the day, I have six plus two, which is eight. Eight multiplied by pi over two is gonna be four pi. I didn't expect that. I expected it to be too far away from what we got at the beginning. Okay, so that's it. It's four pi. Perfect. Okay, now let's try the left end point, the second option. I'm gonna do it here. B, let's do the left end point. Okay, left end point. We're going to do the same thing. The Riemann sum for 4 will be equal to pi over 2. So what would be the first? So the, for the first rectangle, we'll be taking the left end point. So we start from here. So we're going to go to 0. It's going to be f of 0 plus f of pi over 2. Because for the second rectangle, this is the left end point, which is pi over 2, f of pi over 2. Plus, if we go to the third rectangle, this is the left end point, which is pi, f of pi. Plus, we go to the last one, this is the left one, so it's going to be um, f of 3 pi over 2. And then you stop. Okay? Now, what happens at this point is, oh, we evaluate. Come on, let's do it. So this is pi over 2 into f of 0, sine 0 is 0, so plus 2, that's going to be 2, plus, you know what, you can copy and paste from the previous one because you already did the rest, okay, the only thing that was different are the first and the last, so I know that f of pi over 2 is uh, 3, plus 2, plus 1, and then I don't need the third one because uh, it's not here, okay, and that's it, so let's add, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus one, that's six plus, no way, no way. Our answer again is four pi, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, now, you see what just happened? The estimates are even precisely correct. Now let's go where people get stuck when you talk about upper sum and lower sum. Let's do it. So for upper sum, just look at each rectangle and ask yourself, which of the two heights is the upper height? That's all you need to ask. So there is no rule. You don't say, oh, it's on the left or on the right. No, you gotta ask yourself, which of these is higher? I know this one is higher, so that's what I'm gonna use for the first rectangle. So I'm gonna go here and say my Riemann sum for uh, the four is gonna be pi over two. And then when I make this, Instead of me choosing left or right, I'm gonna decide by myself which is higher. Right now, this is higher. For this rectangle, the first rectangle, this is higher. So it's the function from pi over two. So it's gonna be f of pi over two. Plus, I get to the next rectangle, which is higher? Well, it's still this pi over two. So don't, don't say, oh, I gotta keep going, don't go. You gotta ask yourself for this rectangle, this is the higher one, so it's still gonna be pi over two. F of pi over two. Plus, we get to this one, which is higher, this or this? Well, it's this one, so it's F of pi, plus F of pi, okay? Plus, we go to the next one, which is higher? This is the higher one, so it's gonna be F of two pi, plus F of two pi. Okay, now let's put the numbers in. So this is pi over two multiplied by, what is f of pi over two? I think it's three, okay? 
this also is 3 plus what is f of pi it's 2 and what is f of 2 pi it's gonna be 2 also okay remember you just have to plug in if say you can't read it from the graph just plug in these things into the graph and whatever you get is your answer okay so at this point I have 6 plus 4 that's 10 10 times pi over 2 is gonna be equal to pi 5 pi Ooh, that's why it is always called the overestimate because you, you always come on not everything is always high 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 you gotta go low sometimes okay so and let's do the last one the lower sum okay which is D so for the lower sum we're gonna do the same thing this is um, R for 4 will be pi over 2, no, pi over 2, yes, pi over 2 divided by, I mean multiplied by, where do we go? Take the first rectangle, we want the lower sum, so you're going to pick the lower one, which is this one, say so to be f of 0. You go to the second rectangle, you're going to pick the lower one, that's f of pi. And you go to the third rectangle, you're going to pick this one. That's going to be plus f of 3 pi over 2. Plus this one, uh-oh, it is still 3 pi over 2. That's f of 3 pi over 2. That's what we've got. Now let's plug in the numbers. This is going to be pi over 2. And what's f of 0? Do you remember what f of 0 was? It was 2. Plus f of pi was 2 also Ooh. then f of 3 pi over 2 it was 1 and f of 3 pi over 2 is still 1 okay and that leaves us with 2 plus 2 that's 4 plus 2 that's 6 divided by 2 is 3 pi plus 3 oh it's equal to 3 pi come on 3 pi equals 3 pi Underestimate, overestimate. That's it. Now the last one is when they say you should use the midpoint. The midpoint means you now have to find this point. You see, it tends to minimize the overage and also minimize the shortage. So you'll end up with some average nice number in the middle so if you want to find the middle here you just need to divide this by this uh, by 2 and then that, this will be pi over 4 and then you can use pi over 4 you don't need to consider whether it's high or low you just pick pi over 4 when you get here add pi over 4 to this that's gonna be um, 3 pi over 4 and then you go here to the next one and the next one if you use these numbers you might want to try it and leave it in the comments and let me know what your answer is okay that would be the midpoint, uh, the midpoint. You want to use the midpoint for your estimation, midpoint estimate, okay? Whatever answer you get, let me know if it's better, if it's exactly the same. And life is just going to be beautiful. I'll see you in the next video. Don't ever stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.